you would think that I, I can express myself and I can put words down, but when it comes to my own feelings, yeah. it's really, really tough. Welcome to another episode of Chewing the Fat. I am your host, Big Rob. Thank you so much for tuning in, downloading, following. I really appreciate the support. Thanks for the new folks that follow me on Instagram at Chewing the Fat VR. Uh, of course, you can find me on the website as well at ChewingTheFatBR.com. It's got all the social links on there and also the folks that have bought me a coffee through that. I, I can't tell you how much it means that you have put your dollars uh, into actual support of this podcast. It means so very much to me. It allows me to continue to have conversations about mental health and really to dive into just people that are doing amazing things. And I'm so excited about my guest today. Uh, I have discovered his work. He is an artist. Uh, he's n a new artist to me. I believe a fairly new artist to our town, but he is amazing doing some great, great stuff. Please welcome Addison Nide. 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 You got it. There we go. I knew I was going to mess it up. No. It's because I was thinking too much about it. Addison, thank you for being here, man. Thank you so much. I am such a huge fan of this podcast. I watch every single episode. Oh, it is, it's amazing to be part of this. Oh. So I'm kind of, you know, geeking out a little bit. I'm like, <laughs> I'm on the Chew and the Fat podcast. This is awesome. Here in here in the junkie room, the junkie studio. I no. I, I appreciate you coming. Uh, we had a bit of a, a scheduling thing where you thought you were about a scheduled a month out from now and i was like hey just making sure you're coming and you're like i'm watching empire strikes back but i'm only 10 minutes away i was like you don't have to give up on that but i appreciate that you were like you know what i want to come on in and i and i appreciate it addison yeah. um so again i say you are new to me uh are you and i feel like you're new to the augusta area how mm -hmm. long have you been here in augusta uh it'll be two years in november Wow. So yeah, it'll be my two, two second year anniversary. Wow. So you were just an Augusta baby. Yeah. But yeah. you are doing some amazing things here in town with some of your mural work and uh, your art pieces and your message. Uh, I love the messages you have uh, next to the bees knees there that uh, kind words are sweet like honey. Yeah. That's so good. It is so good and so true. Um, so, so where are you from then? I am from Cincinnati, Ohio. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, I grew I grew up there. I lived there for about sixteen years. Wow! Yeah, okay. and then uh, my dad uh, sold sold his company. Um, he had a big uh, department store that Walmart bought out. Oh, yeah, in okay. Cincinnati and in Clarksville, Indiana. He had two locations, and then he sold it off, retired, and he's like, "We're going to move down to Daytona Beach." And I'm like, "What?" I was like sixteen. <laughs> I'm like, we're, because I had friends, I had school, I had just yeah. you know graduated, and like, we're going to move to Daytona Beach, Florida. Right. And he's right. like, "Yeah, I'm retiring. We're going to go down there. We ju we just bought a condo." I'm like, "You just bought a condo?" And we just we 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 packed up, and like in a week we were gone. Wow. And I spent the 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 better part of 20 years in Daytona beach. Florida. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty, and, that's pretty intense to be retired at 16. <laughs> right. Cause yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. Daytona can be a kind of retirement community. It, it really was. Except for like during spring break, then it's a whole different type of community. Exactly. But, Move, moving there, being 16 years old, being in the community that, that we were in, yeah. we were in a retirement community. Oh, wow. Cause um, I'm, I'm, I'm adopted. Okay. Um, so I didn't know my real parents. My, my parents are much older than, than regular parents are, you know? Mm. So my mm -hmm. dad was, my dad was 70 years old when he retired. Oh, wow. So, wow. you know, it, when being in that kind of community, it was just, it was, it was so, it was, it, it was really hard to get used to. Yeah. You know, yeah, I can imagine. But it was really gated and it was right by the ocean. It was extremely luxurious, you mm -hmm. know, and I was like, does all kids have this, mm -hmm. you know? And then there was no kids around at all. And I was like, so I grew up, you know, pretty much around like an older community. And wow. so now were you, um, were you always uh, artistic, even from from Cincinnati and growing up? Were you always like a, I always ask uh, artists, were you a doodler? Were you, yeah, <laughs> were you were always drawn in the margins mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah, I was always doing. Uh, they would take me to Cracker Barrel like every weekend. I, oh, would yeah? draw, I would draw Darth Vader and little Star Wars characters on the napkins. And oh stuff. wow! <laughs> yeah. okay. So is that so? Is that where a lot of your your uh, inspiration came from was from like sci-fi and star wars and that yes kind of stuff. uh pretty much uh i got connected um to a comic book writer uh back in high school wow. and then i went to daytona state and then i met up with a graphic designer that did a lot of work for dc comics and warner wow. brothers and he got me into like this whole batman series it was like he was drawing for dark 
it was Dark Horse Comics. Yeah. It was like an affiliate of DC. And he was doing like his own thing, creating his own characters. But he had like a like this, you know, entourage of people that did Batman and the Joker and Superman and stuff. And I got to meet like all those people. Yeah. And we were just we were sitting at, a, you know, a, a bar. I don't know if I could say that. But, yeah. Um, one night and he was like, why don't you just draw like we had it? like, you know how like when a movie is is uh, getting like laid out like the, the maps mm-hmm. for it, you see like all oh, the, the storyboard. Yeah, yeah. the storyboard. Exactly. Yeah. And we were pretty much building a storyboard for a story, a Batman story that I had an idea for with little square napkins yeah. all across the bar. And we were, I was just drawing out these Batman. He's like, this is a really good story. This story has never been told before. And it, it hadn't I mean, it was super, it's a lot like the, the Robert Pattinson Batman. Oh wow. You know, like yeah. kind of how he came to be. Cause that story was never, it was told in like a little bit of year one and a lot of different comics, but I mm-hmm. wanted to tell it in a different way. Yeah. And that's just, that's how the artistic thing really kind of started blowing up because I, I got involved with them and I was doing like comic con shows and, and then right at the end, it kind of all fell apart. Oh, says wow. we have a story that's kind of like this, you mm-hmm. know, that's already kind of in the works. So, so thanks, but no thanks. Yeah. Kind of thing. It was kind of oh. like that. Oh, no, Cause wow. we, we didn't have anything solid. We had this storyboard, we had a bunch of sketches, mm-hmm. we had the anchor and we had all the details in the storyline. It was you know, about 167 pages that we oh, had a wow. writer that did it yeah. and they, they still shut it down because it was so already in line with something that they already had. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but it was, it was so long. It was before the Heath Ledger one. And oh, wow. It, it was during the, in between Batman begins and the dark Knight. Oh, wow. So wow. that is so cool. But did, so did you actually work for them? Were you employed by? Dark yeah, I was, a, I was a freelance. I was a freelance. Wow. They 1099 me. Yeah. Wow. So I didn't really, I only got commissions like yeah. at, at fairs. Uh, we did a lot of shows, uh, comic book conventions, mm-hmm. toy shows. I love those things. Yeah. You know, cause it, it just gives you a way to, to find such vintage, really awesome stuff that mm-hmm. just so nostalgic, you yeah. know, it was rad. <laughs> that is so cool. Mm-hmm. That is awesome. So, so after the, the comic book kind of fell apart yeah. is, is that where everything kind of severed with your connection yeah. with him and- yeah well he was trying to get me to kind of be a part of his he had his own character he okay. was designing okay. it was a completely original character that he really loved and he wanted to to shoot to see because he wanted to pick something up right and he really wanted me to do it i just could not get into it i gotcha. was he was feeding me like who he is and and what he was about and i don't want to mention now because I, I don't know the the, the story of of how, if that is even a character now, because right. he, he could be, and I just I haven't done any research on it. But right, right. I just couldn't get around it. It was, gotcha. yeah. You know, I have it, to visually see something to be able to 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 get in there and do it. Right. And I just I couldn't I couldn't it, get there. It just didn't it didn't spark whatever inside you to to yeah. really create that thing. Yeah, I, I totally understand that. I totally understand that. Um. So so you're you're, you're doing that. You're 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 in Daytona. Mm-hmm. What brings you to Augusta? Um, what brought me to Augusta? There, there was a, a girl that I was dating okay. at the time, um, uh, that I loved very, very much. Uh-huh. And she lived here, and, okay. but, um, she had a lot of ties in, in Daytona mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. Florida and she was always going back and forth. Okay. And, uh, I fell held over heels in love with her Yeah, and we, she would come to Florida and I would come here. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I w- she would show me around. She would show me downtown. She would show me all these murals and stuff. Because uh-huh. at that time, I was doing lettering when I first met her. Okay. And she's like, "Look at all these lettering. Like, yes, you can." And the oh yeah, the, yeah, yeah. That was the first one I saw, and I was like, "Because at the time, I was like, gosh, I, would, I saw that one, and I was like, oh my god, I can, I can totally do that." Mm-hmm. And there it was. Yes, you can. And yeah, I was like, man, it would be so awesome if I could do this. Yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I ended up here. We got really serious. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, she couldn't move to Florida and I was in the opportunity where I could move. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought it would be a really rad experience to see if I could, like what would happen if I moved here? Yeah. You know, like I had my, I have a painting company, mm-hmm. residential and commercial painting company. That's, that's still grounded in Florida. Uh-huh. And I was like, man, it would be, it would make me feel so good about myself if I can make it run there and here mm-hmm. and, you know, like be like a corporation almost, yeah. you know, and building my company. I, yeah. It was all positive. And when I got here, I got so plugged into all the business owners here. Yeah. I, there's a BNI group 
that I'm a part of. Mm -hmm. And they got me in front of almost everybody in, in, um, downtown area about the chalkboards that I do. And I was doing a lot of churches, um, new life church Mm -hmm. uh, in Grove town. Mm -hmm. And it just, I was like, uh, and, um, yeah. (laughs) And and that's just, and and here you are. Here I am. Two years later. Mm -hmm. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So in your, in your work, so, so you, you say you're doing lettering and stuff like that. And I do Mm -hmm. notice you have a very, uh, graphic style, uh, but a very, it's almost like you're creating your own fonts. It's, so I guess it's a lettering thing, I think, uh, mm-hmm. in some of the work that I've seen that you've done mm-hmm. around town. And it's, uh, it's really cool stuff. And of course, I'm following you on Instagram and, mm-hmm. uh, like the, the way you, you did the whole like alphabet, uh, mm-hmm. in different styles and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so those are just so cool. If you, if you always, is that, really what you like to lean into is that is, is how letters are formed and how people perceive letters and different, like yes <laughs> emotions and, and feelings that you could tell from just, just a letter. Absolutely. Yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. I, I, I am huge on, on words. Mm-hmm. Um, just words are so powerful. Oh yeah. You know, because yes. we, this is the way we, how we communicate mm-hmm. and, and the way that you communicate is it could affect and people grab a hold of that. Yeah. And, it's always motivational speakers has always grabbed me and, and podcasts. I love listening <laughs> to things and I love, I love hearing speeches. And yeah. when I started the lettering company, I was, it was at a church mm-hmm. at my church in relevant at Daytona mm-hmm. that I was not, it was not going to give up. You know, I, I, there's plenty of amazing churches here also, but that one is where I started the, the, um, the lettering thing when mm-hmm. it, it, it just kind of evolved out of mm-hmm. nothing. Yeah. Um, but when when I first when I first started doing it, they asked they had a, a special event, and they had a giant chalkboard probably about the size of this wall. Mm-hmm. And they're like, "Will you draw Welcome, Doctor Rob?" Mm-hmm. And his name was Doctor Rob Thompson. Oh, wow. um, and I was like, "Well, I, I've I've never done lettering before. I mean, mm-hmm. you just want me to just write it?" Or he's like, "No, just just do it." And I'm like, "You know, I do like Batman stuff." And he's like, <laughs> "Like, yeah, you can do it. You can." I'm like, "Okay, all right, I'll do it." Yeah. And then I did it, and it 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 just everybody was like, wh- who did that? Yeah. And I was like, that, that, this is nothing, you know, like I didn't think it was anything. Cause like, you know, going from drawing Superman and Batman to right. writing words, it's, it's, you know, black and white. Yeah. And it just turned into this massive thing that, that I was not expecting and I was not prepared for. Oh wow. Because we had so many business owners that went to the church also that was yeah. like, they have chalkboards yes. and they were like, we need this guy, get this guy to come do this. Thing. Who is this? What's his yeah. name? And, and it exploded. Like right in the, and they were like, we're keeping this chalkboard and you're going to do it every single month until you're like 90. And I'm like, okay. (laughs) Wow. So, but I mean, but that's, I mean, that's a, that's a great thing. Sometimes uh, uh, when I talked to April Henry King, she, she kind of had the same thing where it was like somebody asked her to do a painting. She'd never done painting before Mm -hmm. and realized that she just loved it, that something clicked about it. Yeah. Uh, You know, that's amazing. Somebody just asks you to, Hey, we just want you to do this. And you're like, Oh, this is going to be a one-off thing. And I'm just going to kind of, yeah. And it's not, I don't really think it's the greatest thing. And then to, to, for it to turn into something like this, where, where you get so much other, like, you know, you know, work, mm-hmm. but also enjoyment and joy out of it yeah. too. Right? Yeah. I had I, the, the first chalkboard. I can do a chalkboard now in like a couple of hours. But that one took me about four days. The oh. first one. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. So it took me a long time because you know, when they entrust you with something that's so large and it's so mm. detailed and it's something that's so important to them. Right. You know, I'm like, okay, I, I need to you know match that mm-hmm. level of passion. And, and I tried my best and I look at it today as inspiration. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I better, <laughs> I better never, never do anything like that again. But. Wow. But, but, but it's still, it's, it's being able to look back at that and like yeah. I said, still drawing on inspiration from it as in a what not to do, but uh, you know, or, or to learn from like, you know, that took you four days to do that. And like you mm-hmm. said, you can do something in a couple of hours now that you mm-hmm. feel is so much more elevated than what you started out with. Yeah, I have it. I, I printed it out. I framed it and everything. I look at it every day. That's awesome. So I, I always <laughs> want to remind myself like, you sucked at one point. <laughs> <laughs> so, and so now that you don't suck, <laughs> you know, now that you don't suck, I, I guess I'm gonna. I, I've I've not seen. The, have you put this on your on your Instagram? Or anything? It's not. No, it's not, I don't have the, the. I'm not brave. That brave. To okay. Put it up there. Okay. Maybe you can send it to me because I'm I'm gonna begin. I just just I won't put it anywhere. Just okay. I just want to see it. I just want to see yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. 
because I guarantee you, <laughs> you don't suck because you've not seen me draw or, or try to write. I, I write like a psychopath. It's like, <laughs> it's just like, and I can't draw stick figures. It's just horrible. It's, it is horrible. Um, but that's, we're, we're not all given the same gifts. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, it's just, it's, well, you know, I saw a quote that says a baby can't do a roof. That's, that's you true. know, well, like, yeah, yeah. You, I, I bet you could if you tried. I bet uh, if you picked up a pencil and then like got like one of those books or something, yeah. and then just did start basic. If like you know you put the work in to actually, if you really wanted to do it, I right. bet you could. Right. I mean, well, you know, there's there's I think there's a difference between uh, learning a skill and being born with a talent for a skill because that's the thing is like I could probably learn some of that skill. Yeah. I would never be as skillful as you because oh. I don't have the. I don't have the passion for it that you do too. Mm-hmm. And I think that informs a lot of the ability to do and the want and the drive to do mm-hmm. that type of stuff. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so yes, I could probably do better than I do now, but it's, but I'm, I'm okay that <laughs> that's not where, that's not where my talent lies. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so, but it's oh. just I only I only said that just because like when people it's just it bothers me when people say I could never do that like you could you could absolutely do that right yeah like if you it, really wanted to do it you could you know right because so we're I, we're born when we don't have we when we're born we have you know we 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 we're taught how to spell and taught yeah. how to write and you know I'm just, I'm just saying like just to to positively say yes. if you wanted to start calligraphy I I guarantee you, you could do it yeah. I, and I and I 100% agree with what you're saying. It's kind of like that uh, adage, like if you um, if you gauge a fish's intelligence by its ability to climb a tree, <laughs> it's an idiot, <laughs> right? Because fish can't climb trees. Yeah, you know what I That's mean. A great quote. So, so, so yes, I, I I I will take that as as in that's just maybe not where my passion lies. Yes, I could learn to do better than I do, but, uh, but it is not where my passion lies to do that. So thank you for your positive reinforcement of what Absolutely. my abilities could be. Absolutely. I, I appreciate that. And, uh, and that type of positive reinforcement, like you just demonstrated right there is, is very evident in a lot of your work that I've mm. seen here around town. Like I mentioned the piece that's, that's over by the bees knees. Mm-hmm. Um, was that something that they literally asked you to do, or was that some was that a was that phrase something that was within you? That you, you know, that's a that's it's a proverb. Is uh, it? in the Bible? Mm-hmm. It's Proverbs sixteen nineteen. Okay, uh, chapter sixteen verse nineteen. Okay, um, that has always resonated. I got a really rad story if you want to hear about, I do, about yeah. that one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, the a couple weeks before I did it, mm-hmm. I was down in Florida at my church and I was hanging out with my pastors mm-hmm. cause I was, I was painting their house and they, they have uh, a little daughter with them. And I was like, I, I, I write, I, I do calligraphy on their cups and mm-hmm. I, I sneak them all over cause they have a big cafe with a uh, disposable cup. So I would write mm-hmm. scriptures and okay. just, and hide them all over and see if people find them. Oh, and, that's awesome. And post them just, just something fun to do. Yeah. Uh, and I asked her, what, what is your favorite scripture? And she's like, I love the kind words are like honey, mm-hmm. the proverb one. Yeah. And I was like, all right, do that. And I took a picture of I took a picture of all the cups that I do just so if it comes back to me then I go okay that's when I did it mm-hmm. um, and I took a picture of it and I had a meeting with um, with Eric at the the bees knees and I had something completely totally different mm-hmm. um, that I wanted to do because I had asked him um, it'd be a dream to me if I could get a mural on Tenth Street mm-hmm. you know because that's that's what just that I love Tenth Street so much and I love the bees knees I'm always in there yeah that's where I built my website I'm just I just coffee all day long <laughs> and I showed him my original design and he didn't like it and he said do you have anything bee related or anything honey related and I said well I don't really have anything I had this cup that I did like that mm-hmm. and I showed him like this little just the sketch on a cup on my phone mm-hmm. he's like I love that you should try to redesign that make that look like honey I would totally let you do that. And I'm like, really? And I, I totally, I took a screenshot of it and I blew it up. I traced it on my iPad and yeah. I colored it and made it look a little bit like honey. And I shot it back to him. He's like, I love that. Please do that. I'm like, oh, all right. I That's will. awesome. <laughs> That's so that, cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and I th- I th- again, I think that's, that's one of those things when you're, you know, true, true to yourself and just, Here's the stuff, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Those those little moments of magic happen, mm-hmm. and it connects with someone 
somewhere else again you you know oh it's just a doodle on a coffee cup yeah but, you know it's, it, it, it was i was if you would have told me that coffee cup would be a mirror i was like there's no way i did it with a sharpie but it the i can send you the coffee cup i still have it <laughs> the picture of it and it looked similar yeah. to it but it was a. Uh, it was actually the full quote because it's kind words are like honey, uh, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. It's the whole. I just cut it right to make it fit that little space. That's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. So I, I encourage you, uh, if you're down Tenth Street over there by the Bees Knees, it's if you're looking at Bees Knees, it's on, it's on the right hand side there of the of the awning. Mm-hmm. Uh, another great. Um, uh, photo op in Augusta, yeah. um, you know, and you're right around the corner from uh, Leonard's big happy mm-hmm. uh, robot there mm-hmm. near Tire City. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's it's a great area, and of course the the coffee at East Knees is primo. You definitely want to stop in there and, and get get a coffee. And right it, there. it was Jason that did the Get Up Augusta, right? The one that right yeah, next to yeah, him. that's right, the one right there on the yeah. corner. You got Get Up Augusta. It's I love that one. there's there's so much. So much cool art. I mean, you really could, if someone hasn't created like a mural tour yet, they really need to. Yeah. That's a, that's a, there's, there's your, you know, thousand dollar business opportunity. You can, you know, get, mm -hmm. you know, get, get folks to go on a mural tour, walking tour. They have it at the Sacred Heart Foundation. They do? Don't they? At the Greater Alts Council, they do that. Do they have a a mural tour? Summertime. I do not know that. I think they have like a little trolley. I've seen it. Okay. I think that they do, they do, they, they take you around all Augusta and they show you the robot and they show you the great James Brown one. Okay. And they, um, I think the, the ones that's underneath the bridge, the, the, the really, really big one. Okay. Um, yeah, I'd say, I didn't know. See, that's, I think, I I think so. I don't want to, I don't want you to quote me on it. I will, I will, I will do some online research and I will check that (laughs) and, and see if that is, that is a thing. If it's not. Someone should definitely start that. I mean, a, a walking tour, a photo walking tour of mm-hmm. mur- or murals downtown would be amazing. Uh, what other pieces do you have uh, around downtown? Do you have any other pieces? Uh, the, the the place that's not open yet, he asked me not to mention the name okay. that it's up, but it's Thirst Come, Thirst Serve. It's a blue one. Nice. On the... Um, <laughs> On the border. That was the first mural I ever did. Okay. Uh, he just reached out to me and he says, I hear you're a lettering artist and trying to get your feet wet. You want to do a mural? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I do. And he's like, well, I have this wall. It's going to come down in December when we open, but you can do it. You can practice on it if you yeah. want. Okay. And, and he gave me this quote. He's like, I really like this quote. We do this. And I tried to match it exactly like his quote. And uh, that was my first one. That's awesome. And then there's, there's this little teeny tiny indie little soda company that you may have heard of called Coca-Cola. Uh-huh. uh-huh. And there's, there's two of those on Reynolds Street. Awesome. I just, I think I just finished, I finished it. The last one, um, two days ago. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> now, now those were more like a restoration kind of yes. piece, right? So it's not <laughs> like an original, uh, it's it, like I said, it's almost like a restoration of what was there, that original signage. And you know, that's the thing. Augusta has some great old, oh, yes. you, you know, painted signs and, oh, yes. and, and uh, things like that. So that's amazing that you're able, uh, and, you know, and being able to use your skill as a uh, in in lettering and in murals and knowing how to do that stuff. And 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 I'm sure with your eye, and I think I remember seeing this on your on your either your Facebook or your Instagram, you know, about the color matching that you wanted to make sure that you had, you know, accurate colors for what you're doing. It yeah. is it's a, it's true it's a true restoration. Mm-hmm. As opposed to just well, let me just slap something up on it. Yeah, or whatever. I did. I mean, I did my research on on yeah. that, that first one that I did because yeah. I got to see. I had pictures from the seventies of what it looked like. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of pictures of it, what it used to look like, but they're in black and white. Ah, uh, you know, yeah. Uh, there's no colors, and there's trucks in front of it, and there was a train that ran that apparently ran right into it. Yeah, yeah. Because um, so, it was a it was a bottling facility, if I'm not mistaken, or something like that, or a manufacturing facility, or something yeah. like back in there. Yeah. So it wasn't really hard. It wasn't really easy to see, but I could tell that it was bright red mm-hmm. and the letters were white. Mm-hmm. It said, it's the real thing. Yeah. That was their slogan back then. And the Coca Cola, and, the, and there was a border mm. and it had to have been either yellow or green. Yeah. So that's awesome. Do you have any other, <clears throat> do you have any other things planned that you're working on? Any murals or? Yeah. Or in- I have, I'm actually, believe it or not, I'm actually going to do one tonight. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I wow. Had a, I had a meeting about it yesterday, last night, okay. really late at my. Uh, at the arsenal, uh-huh. I did um, a chalkboard for them, okay. and I'm going to do a mural for them. Nice. And then um, the commissioner of Harlem mm-hmm. uh, approached me, and they said, "We have a mural that you can't see anymore that used to be there. Mm. Um, 
that's not there anymore. I don't know if you saw the story. It's the Coca-Cola. Uh, I, I sent the picture that they sent me from the, it's that's from like the forties okay. or fifties uh-huh. of the Coca-Cola mural that they used to have. And I, I went down there and saw it and you can't see it. It's gone. Yeah. There's nothing left of it. Just oh. the ring around the Coca-Cola is red. You can yeah. see that, and but the rest it. of it is totally gone. And they asked me to restore it. And because the, the hardest thing that I've, that I've found doing lettering and running a painting company mm-hmm. is trying to find this time balance. Mm-hmm. And it is extremely hard to do these murals because these murals take a lot of time. I mean, yeah. you, you guys get to see them at 50 seconds, you know? right. yeah. 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 <laughs> but it's, it's, you know, it's eight or nine hours of me sitting yeah. out there just really getting, trying to precisely really, really get yeah. it, especially yeah. on that aluminum wall. But I'm going to do that one tonight. I awesome. try to do them at night. That way, I can run my painting company during the day. Oh well, I don't know when you. I don't, you, I don't know when you find time to sleep then, though. Yeah, yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 I don't know if, if you know about the, the mural restoration project that I started from the Coca Cola one. Oh yeah. Um, just the outpour that I got the 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 positive, um, reaction. Yeah, I think yeah. is the right word. Uh, that. I got from that is it's been tremendous. It's been very heartwarming because I, I just wanted yeah. my only intention was I knew that in a year or two, that thing was going to be gone. Yeah. You know, nobody was going to ever know that was ever there mm-hmm. in like a year or two. And I'm like, I can't have this because I drive by it every single day. Yeah. I've seen it every single day. I re- I live right across the street from it Yeah, and I see it. And I was like, why don't I just do it? And it was months went by and I was like, I could get into so much trouble for doing this. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like I could, you know, yeah. so I just, it, I always went back and forth. I'm like, should I do this or mm-hmm. do I just want to do this? Mm-hmm. And I just finally said, you know what, I'm going to do it. And yeah. taking, being an artist is, is, is a lot about taking risks. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I, and I, I did it. And when I found out it, there was such a positive reaction from it, like the, the newly elected mayor, and the commissioners and people that were in yeah in high seats mm-hmm. were like, thank you so much for this. I'm like, I'm going to do the rest of them. Yeah. Cause there's 12 total. I counted them all out. I did it one night. I walked around downtown Yeah, and I was like, oh, which ones would I would really want to restore? I yeah. really want to bring these back. And then, then I started finding ones that are super really hidden. Like yeah. there's, there's ones where I was talking to other people and like, I didn't know that that was there. Where mm-hmm. is that? Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't know that one was there. What, wh- where are you finding these? And I'm like, the, like these are the, the people don't even know about cause they are really well hidden mm-hmm. because I think they were put up at one point and then buildings were built around them. Yeah. So you can't really see them anymore. Yeah. yeah. Like the one on top of Augusta and co mm-hmm. uh, you, the Jones furniture company. Yeah. I really yeah. want to do that one. Yeah. The Dixie, uh, the Dixie, Dixie restoration and furniture company. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then that one's on, um, what that one's on what building that's on yeah um but reaching out to the owners yeah. is, is the most important aspect of this yeah you know getting their permission because i don't want to just climb up you know 50 feet in the air and start painting right um but and the uh, did you know i want to ask you do you know about the sprite one the sugar-free sprite mural no really where is there a sugar-free sprite <laughs> i know mural? i ask everybody i'm like because i found it it's in an alley that's that's literally about as wide as my hand Oh wow! <laughs> and I, I squeezed in there. I mean, it's not. I'm. I'm. I'm I might be over exaggerating. It. It's. <laughs> right. a, it's. You know. But it is really thin. Mm-hmm. Uh, in between two buildings that I don't know what they used to be. They're mm-hmm. nothing anymore. Oh wow! But it's in between those buildings, and it's a giant sh- tri sugar free sprite. Wow! Only one calorie. Huh. That's what, and it's bright yellow and green. Wow! And it's. It's almost there, but. I really, really want to do that one. And, but the only thing is, I don't even know how I would photograph it. You know, you I'd have to like, you know, I'd have to bend down and like get way down and no windows in the other building that you could yeah. shoot it through or anything yeah. like that. And yeah. another thing is like, I'd be the only one that knew about it. Yeah. Like if I restored it, it'd be great. You know, but that'd be something just for me. Cause yeah. I don't think anybody has ever seen it. Yeah. I, I don't even know where that, where that would be. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, there, it's downtown I, somewhere, huh? Yeah, I well, found it. It's in, your... it's right in an alley that you can walk down, and mm-hmm. if you look up, it's way up there. Wow! But it's this big billboard, almost like the Coke one, huh. and you got to walk along the way yeah. just to really see what it says. It says only one calorie, wow. sugar free Sprite. There's your there's your treasure hunt right there to find the sugar free <laughs> Sprite Sprite uh, mural that's in there. That's yeah. amazing. And then, the, do you know about the RC Cola one? 
Mm, where is that one? It's pre- it's almost really visible. It's right next to the pizza joint. Okay. Yeah. It's right there in that alley. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's RC Cola, and they're still around. Yeah. I didn't know that until recently. Like, yeah. You can still get that stuff. Yeah. And that's like, and I know there's, and that's the thing. It's like, what what constitutes a a mural, or if is or is it just an advertisement or painting on the side of a building? Is there is there a line that skews between yeah. it becoming a mural and just you know advertising on the building? Because I, I mean, I know about the 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 feed and seed one on the side of Vintage Julie's building. Yeah, you know she mm-hmm. and it's it's pretty visible. It's I. It's not very colorful. It may have been more colorful in the past, but I think mm-hmm. it's just—I want to say it's like Avid or something like that. I can't—I have a terrible memory, but I know that it's there, like because mm-hmm. that's what that building used to be, like a feed and seed or whatever. Yeah. So, um, it's right there on Averett. The Averett, har- Averett. That's the it, hardware yeah. store, right? Yeah. That's, that used that's, to, that's the, on the other side. There's that big long horizontal. The, mm-hmm. Is that horizontal? Yes. Yes. The vertical. <laughs> vertical. Yeah. The vertical. Oh, vertical. Side. Right. Yeah. Yes. The vertical side. Yeah. Yeah. But that's so cool. That's so cool that you, for someone who's only been here two years, I, I've I've been here almost fifty years. Okay. So yeah. I'm born, born and bred in Augusta. So so to for you to have discovered these, mm-hmm. <laughs> you, you know, hidden gems, yeah. uh, in our downtown, I think is amazing, and I think it's amazing that you have the that you've embraced this town to put your heart and your art into it mm-hmm. you know to to be able to give back to a place that that you seem to be happy calling home right now yeah absolutely and i just i just think that's amazing and and I, and and for you to for people to now be discovering you and and uh your art and your and wanting you to be a part of creating art for their businesses and stuff like that as well i think that's i think that's just amazing and you were talking about the restoration project is that is that part of the the gofundme that you have yes. set up yes uh, that just supplies all the layering enamel that i'm using to mm-hmm. to restore these murals as i get them approved um a couple of them have been approved already mm-hmm. um so i'll just go down the line and do the ones that are approved and just pray keep praying that that the other ones the the owners will get back to me. Yeah. And so, so if you want to help uh, Addison with his restoration project, of course, I'll put the uh, link in the show notes. Uh, so that if you would like to donate to his GoFundMe, that is again, strictly for him to buy the paint and supplies yeah. to be able to do this work again, to restore these signs, to re- bring back uh, this color and this beauty to our town, uh, to this area that we call home. Uh, again, I will put those links uh, in the show notes as well. Uh, so aside from from chalkboards and, and murals, mm-hmm. uh, do you do any other like uh, commission work or small pieces or anything else that you have that you're working on? Um, I mean, I know you run that your day is full apparently yeah. with with murals mm-hmm. and then running the paint company during mm-hmm. during the day. Uh, but do you have like any passion projects? Uh, maybe it's not even uh, art related that sh- that just really set you on fire that bring you joy. Uh, not right now. Yeah. No, it, I have just fully committed to the the, the murals. Mm-hmm. Um, at the beginning of the year, uh, I invested a, a huge chunk of money into the painting company. That way, I would I could the only way the only reason I can be doing this is because I made an investment in myself, and I would encourage everybody to do this. That if you have a company, you know, and you you want to step away from it, then do it. You know, because you only have this this one time, this one life. In these years, in these moments, you have 24 hours in a day. So I, I invested a lot of money at the beginning of the year, and I, I told myself that I never committed to this art at all before this year. I, I knew that it was something that I had, but I never thought, and I never would have bet on myself to, that it would have went this far, as as far as it has. And at the beginning of the year, I, I invested in myself. I'm going to pursue this. I'm going to step away from the painting company. I hired a whole team. They, it's not a whole team. It's two guys, but they do all the stuff for me, but it, it, it's, it's my baby. You know, I've been running this, that company for 10 years and it's, it's extremely scary, (laughs) you know, stepping away from something that you built and letting somebody else run it. Um, but so was starting a company on my own for Mm -hmm. nothing. So at the beginning of the year, I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to do it full time and I'm going to go for it and I'm going to invest in, in the painting company and let them do it. And step away and pursue art full time, and, and it hasn't let me down. Thank God. And you guys, the community, the Augusta community, I, I, I can't thank them enough. They're they've been so positive and so like encouraging, and and it's the complete opposite of how I thought. 
people would react to it. <laughs> you know, I thought people were going to be so mad. <laughs> and and I don't, you know, that's just how it was. But um, I'm so grateful for the for the opportunity that, that, that Augusta is so welcoming to artists. All right, Edison. This is the second part of the podcast. This is where we talk a little bit more about you, go a little bit more in depth, and talk about mental health. Mm. Uh, I am a firm believer that uh, everybody, in some form or fashion, goes through uh, some form of depression or down days or sad days. Sometimes you just don't feel like getting out of bed. Sometimes you might think that you're just being lazy and you just need an extra day to sleep. But sometimes that's that's because stuff's weighing on your mind. And I think everyone goes through that. Mm. Uh, And being able to expose that everybody does go through that, that allows you to not feel alone. So for you, how do you keep the darkness at bay? I, um, you know, it's funny. I never thought about it until um, I watch your, I watch every one of your past podcasts, you know, and um, it is such an important question that you ask that. And thank you Mm -hmm. for for asking that because I think it really helps a lot of people. And I never thought about it myself. You know, until you asked me originally when we when we spoke, um, and I really had to think about it because mm-hmm. you know I think people I think get so used to how they do it they forget how they do it. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I was thinking of how, how I how I do it, and I think I overwhelm myself on purpose. Mm. I think that because I'm an overthinker, mm. uh, I think way too much. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I think if I overwhelm myself and completely fill my plate that I won't have time to think about anything else. Mm. What that, that big elephant in the room is screaming at me and I can just focus on art and I can focus on my painting company. And sometimes it doesn't work. Mm. You know, sometimes, sometimes that elephant is like, you're going to deal with me today. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's, it is, it is, it's very important that I, that I write how I'm feeling down. Mm. Um, cause I have a very, hard time expressing myself mm. um, into words. You mm-hmm. would think that I'd be so good at it, you know, <laughs> that I, I can express myself and I can put words down. But when it comes to my own feelings, yeah. it's really, really tough Yeah, because I don't have, I want somebody to see it. Like I want somebody to, to say like, Oh wow, I'm going through that same thing. Cause it, it, it does. It's, it's crippling. It makes me feel like I'm completely alone mm-hmm. in how I feel. Mm-hmm. And that nobody understands, and I write it down, and and that's what the Letters to God series was. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, I try my best to overwhelm myself, and 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 it, it feels a lot like suppression. Mm. <laughs> that's what it feels like to me. Mm-hmm. And um, but creating art is a outlet. Yeah, for me, writing it down helps tremendously. Mm-hmm. Um, creating these really positive affirmations for mm. myself that, mm-hmm. that I am enough and I am worthy of being loved and I'm not alone and people do care about me and I, you know, I'm not a loser mm-hmm. and I'm not, you know, I write these things down to remind myself and, and, and put it up and, you know, it's not something, anything that I would post or ever share with anybody, but it's for me Yeah, and it really does help a lot. Yeah. And I think that's important. That's the, you, you know, we talk a lot about having the stuff that's on the inside and, and getting it out because sometimes that stuff that you have inside, you don't want it to to fester and decay and to cause you to, to fall in deeper on that. Yeah. Uh, I totally understand. Sometimes you have to, sometimes you have to sit in those bad places, but you always have to get up and keep, and move through it mm-hmm. uh, and being able to turn, you know, what's inside and writing it down. I, I, I'm a firm believer in journaling and being able to, to write those things down. And that helps to alleviate that. That helps to, and it's not that you're, uh, you know, trying to just like, well, well write it down and it's done. You know, it's, yeah. it, there's, there's no magic formula to that, but mm-hmm. being able to have it and whether you uh, ceremonially, you know, burn the piece of paper you know, to, to, to let it release that way. Or if you keep that journal and you go back to see the progress you've made, you know, I think those things are important. Being able to focus on something else, I believe is important. I don't, I, I, I think when you're talking about uh, the overloading yourself, um, can feel sometimes like suppression because you can be like, well, if I'm, if I'm so, so busy with this, I can't look at that. Right. Um, I think there's probably a fine line 
in there where being able to have a focus and a creative outlet, and a, it's not that you're necessarily trying to forget that something else is there, but you're not giving it power. Yes. You're, you're, you're not feeding that thing. Yes. It's you know, whereas if you turn your attention to it, that feeds it. Sometimes that makes it grow bigger and that that's not good. It's right. again, not that you're um, ignoring it, but you're doing something else that's bringing in more joy, bringing in more light to help keep that darkness mm-hmm. away from you. And I, I think that's amazing that you, you know, that you have that outlet. Um, I've never heard it interpreted like that. That was really, really powerful, Rob. Mm. I really like that. Thank you. I need to write that down. <laughs> you. That was really good. Um, and, and you talk about wanting people to see it, wanting to share that with yeah. people. I, I believe also that having someone that you can talk to about that. And, and if it's one of those things where it's like, I, I, you know, I can't have the conversation. I've written it down. To be able to, you know, take a picture of whatever you've written down or text it to a friend and say, hey, this is how I'm feeling. I wrote this down. I just want you to be aware. Yeah. Just so there's awareness. It's again, uh, And to be able to have it in a non-judgmental type of yeah. conversation, be like, Hey, we don't, we don't have to go over this and we don't have to like yeah. churn this stuff up, but I just want you to be aware this was today and here are the things yeah. that were going on inside today. And I just want you to know, you know, I, I, you know, Rob, I want to do, I want to do it so bad. I, I just, the things that it says is yeah, it, it just requires so much bravery and so much courage to say it because it comes from such a really dark place mm-hmm. of that. Um, the girl that I fell in love with that I moved that, that mm-hmm. I moved here for and it fell apart mm-hmm. uh, after the first year. And it's all uh, um, the letters to God series that I have that I write down. It's, mm-hmm. it's about that, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm a hundred percent focused and exhausting every single resource that I have mm-hmm. to get myself that help that I need and, and give myself those positive affirmations. And I want to put it out there. Yeah, I really do. I really do. And it it just, she follows me Mm -hmm. and she sees the stories and she sees it because she was my number one fan of fan. This is cringy, but you know, she sees it, Yeah, you know, and I know that she would see it Mm -hmm. and I, and I don't, I'm so kind. I don't want to inflict the pain that I felt on yeah. anyone else. And I know that if she did see it, it would, it would cause some, some pain because of what I had to go through and mm-hmm. what I was put through. I want people to know this is, this is where this lettering came from. It didn't come from, it, it all didn't come from a really bright, happy place. Right. You know, some of it did. Yeah. But not, not all of it. You know, I do a lot of drippy letters yeah. that I really love a lot. And that came from, um, not a happy place. Yeah. But it's not always sunshines and rainbows. <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, you know, they, they gotta say you have to, you have to put up with the rain for the rainbows. Yeah. <laughs> Some days, you mm-hmm. know, as, as cheesy as that is. Um, I, I, I encourage you to do what you're doing and to keep doing what you're doing. But to have the courage to not rob somebody else that might be needing to hear that those words. Yeah. To be able to know that maybe they're going through that same type of thing. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Okay. And, and I'm not trying to pressure you no, yeah. or anything like that. I, I, I totally 100% out of love want to encourage you and to for you to be brave. And you'll be there. You'll get there. I 100% believe it. Thank you. Because I, I, I know that's your, I know that's your heart and, and, and your kindness will win. And you have to be kind to yourself too. Yeah. And you being able to be kind to yourself can help so many other people too. You know, the, I don't think that anything within you is coming from a, a vengeful Oh, no. Hateful type yeah, no. of place. No, no, no. So, yeah. so again, I'm not. I just, I just want to 
say that I think that you taking care of you is the most important thing that you can do is to, to love yourself and to be kind to yourself and be kind to others. Right. Well, that being kind to yourself is going to spill out into others. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It is. Um, and, and if you can just start with one person, you know, whether it's family, mm-hmm. a, 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 a best friend, a, a business partner, whoever, that you can just be yourself yeah. and to be honest with, I, I, I hope you find that, that person that you can do that so that then you can continue on in, into even greater and bigger things. Absolutely. It's definitely my mother. My mother is, is my strongest supporter. I show her everything. And, yeah. you know, I don't have a, I don't have a worse critic and I don't have a better critic than my mother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> and that's, that's a, that's valuable to be able to have, yeah. you know, it's really neat. somebody that can give you the honest, yeah. the honesty, yeah. Yeah. the good and the bad. Mm-hmm. You know, we never grow with just the good, you know, it's, you, you feel stagnant oh, yeah. that sometimes it takes that, that honest answer that stings a little bit yeah, yeah. to push you on into the next thing. You know? Yeah. There's, there's no holding back with my mom. If I do something or if a letter's out of place, you, you got to fix that. You see that P you see that a Addison? You know, no, you got to redo that. I'm like, okay, okay, mom. Thank you so much. <laughs> you still keep in touch with her a lot. I mean, I know you're back and forth to Florida still. Yes. That's the reason why I go, I go back and forth her in the church. They're there. Yeah. And, um, I, I, I want to see her as much as I can. It's just Augusta has been pulling me and I'm so grateful for it. They're pulling me more and more here. So it's Florida is getting less and less. You just came back right from Orlando. You had yeah, the, yeah, the went, podcast con. Yeah. I went down there for the podcast. How production. rad was that? It was awesome. It was a great time yeah. and, uh, being able to network and connect with people uh, that energize you, you know, yeah. when, you, when you find those people, those same passions and they can energize you. Uh, it was, it was a great time and it was a great time. Those, and, those stories that you were posting about it on her way down to Florida. Oh yeah. <laughs> that, that was, that made my whole day when you had the Yoo-Hoo, I was like, you, yes. <laughs> I love you. That is my road drink. That <laughs> yes. is my road drink for sure. you and pork rinds. I don't know why, but that's, oh, that's, that's road food for it's me. Delicious. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, that's awesome. And uh, it sounds like your faith is also very important to you as well. Absolutely. Yes. It's very important. It's number one. Um, I got saved in 2016 um, before the lettering started mm-hmm. and it, 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 it transitioned, it went from you know, comics to the, to words, mm-hmm. um, because I, I was able to interpret the way that I, th- not interpret the way that I was feeling, but interpret positive affirmations more in words than I could with figures and mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. So it, it was a very awesome, unexpected transition <laughs> that, that, that the church that I'm a part of relevant mm-hmm. is extremely important to me that I would never, if I lived in California, I would still find a way to get back to Florida and cause they still have that same chalkboard. Oh wow. And they still can. So it's, it's the seventh year of me doing it. So I will never give it up ever. And I'll travel you know, around the world to go to that church and still be a part of it. And they asked me that it's going to be, uh, I can't talk about it. They, yes. asked, they asked me not to talk about it, but there's the, the next trip that I have, a, a couple more murals. Okay. If you could put two and two together, mm-hmm. like, you know, maybe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, Addison, this is the third semi of the show. This is time now for the Fast Five. Fast Five. Fast Five. This is time now for the Fast Five. Fast Five. So that's, that's like only the second time anyone's ever sung the theme song with me, although it's that's awesome. it's still a work in progress. We could do it. That's <laughs> we can work on some harmonies or something yeah, like man. that. That's Got a guitar, sure. bust out the guitar. Like, Fast know. five. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Fast five is powered by Poddex. It's an app created by my friend Travis Brown. Uh, it's made it for podcasters, but anybody can use them. They're great uh, icebreakers. Uh, you can uh, download the app on whatever you know phone app store that you have there. Or you can get physical decks as well, which are great to put a couple of those in your pocket and just ask people weird questions. If you're, you know, painting a mural, somebody walks up to you and be like, hey, <laughs> you know, ask them a question. But if you go to chewinthefatbr.com slash pod decks and use the promo code chew, you can get 10% off your physical decks. But I'm going to use the uh, 
app right here, Addison. No wrong answers. I'm just going to hit the randomizer, and you just give me the first answer off the top of your head, okay? Okay. Here we go. And question number one. Oh, it's a classic. Toilet paper over or under? What? Toilet paper. Does it go over or does it come under? Over. Over. Yeah. Okay. I think I think I think so as well. That is, <laughs> there are people that argue that, but uh, you know, that's like I said, there's no wrong answers. But yeah, I've, I always see see it over, like when you're hotel, they got the little fold and the little arrow that uh-huh. comes out over the top. But <laughs> that's what you know. That's a classic one. All right. Question number two. What's the most annoying bill you have to pay? My most annoying bill. Mm-hmm. Car insurance. Yes. I hate it. Oh my gosh. You know, I've never gotten to a car accident and it keeps rising on me. I don't understand. Yes. I'm well, going through that right now. I have two speeding tickets in my entire driving history, 15 years of driving and it keeps going up. Yeah. Like shouldn't it be going down? It should I'm be. I'm a safe driver. It should be going down. <laughs> it should be going down. But yeah, I'm having to deal with that same thing myself. As a matter of fact, I'm looking at a different company right now because they're like, it's almost going to double. When it renews in like a month or so. So I'm like, so no. weird. Why is it going up? I, I just, I yeah, don't get it. That's yeah. very annoying to me. Yeah. I'm going to have to agree with you that that one is very, very annoying. All right. <laughs> Question number three. What language would you like to master? I would love to learn German. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I just, I can't do it, but mm-hmm. I can do like, they're kind of, how does it go? You know, how do they sound? It's like, oh, your are mortal and so looking good. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to learn German. That's Just, amazing. Yeah. Well, you, you should try like, a, what is it, Duolingo or whatever. There, there are little apps that you can learn yeah. in languages and stuff like that. I knew, I know uh, a, a little bit of German. I took French in high school, mm. which is, but then I'd like, have you actually used the, the Duolingo to try and learn some some German, so I can say Guten Morgen. Yeah. So can good. you do like the accent? <laughs> like you can just speak I, in English? Uh, I don't know if I can do the accent or not, but uh, <laughs> I can say Guten Morgen. <laughs> so good morning to you. But ger- I, they say uh, German is probably one of the best languages if you're a singer to learn because it's very back of the throat and it's kind of kind of got yeah. got a lot of that <laughs> got a roll not like yiddish but like it's got a lot of that back of it's it's like good for breath control and stuff like that so mm-hmm. so i mean i need to work work on my german yeah <laughs> yes. german yes that's correct <laughs> <laughs> number four If you could go back in time and give your younger self one piece of advice, what would it be? You know, I just got asked this question yesterday. What? Yeah, I did. I would wait, say. Wait, wait. Maybe I went back in time. and Did I ask you the question? Did you? Yeah. Was, was that it, you? Was it me? <laughs> <laughs> I would say um, right off the top of my head. Um, it is so hard to answer that. I would say go back and give your dad a kiss. Oh, really? Give your dad a kiss and a hug. Yeah. Because this is the last time you're going to see him. Oh, wow. Yeah. I walked out the door um, to go stay with a friend, and I came back. He was gone. Oh. And he was already gone. Wow. So I never got to say bye to him. And that was that was the hardest thing I've I've ever been through. I would say, go back and hug that man. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I would say. Wow. Wow. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Nothing wrong at all. All right. Question number five. <laughs> If peanut butter wasn't called peanut butter, what would it be called? Glory sauce. Glory sauce. <laughs> I'm the biggest peanut butter fan that you will ever come across. Really? Yeah. I've been eating it like since I was a kid. Yeah. Two years old, maybe one. Yeah. Maybe six months. Maybe. Just, I can't. Just, 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 <laughs> so I love it. I just spoonfuls at a time. Yeah. This is my snack. And whenever uh-huh. I'm watching a movie, watching Star Wars, binging out, uh-huh. Netflix, just big old glob of peanut butter on a spoon. Oh, that's Sometimes awesome. Sometimes I'll go nuts and do, you know, Hershey syrup on top of mm-hmm. it. Oh, mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Or or uh, my wife will, she'll get the spoonful of peanut butter and then she'll have like a cup with chocolate chips in it and she'll dip it in the chocolate chips. Ooh. So now she's got 
oh, some man. texture, chocolate chip and peanut butter. So it's like a little Reese's, but you know, oh, instead wow. of the sauce, yeah, put the chocolate chips in there. Yeah, she'll do that. Thank you for you just booked my evening. <laughs> <laughs> of course, uh, do you do you watch a uh, if you watch Ted Lasso? It's a, it's a, I think it's on Apple TV. It's a, it's, it's a great show. It, you would love it. Yeah. The message behind that show. I really believe you as the That's kind person that you are would love that show. I, I, it, it is one of the best written shows. It's uh Jason Sudeikis. He's playing a, an American football coach that is hired by an English uh, soccer team to be their coach. And he knows mm-hmm. nothing about soccer, mm-hmm. but he is one of the kindest people one of the most positive people and he wins them over with kindness but he has uh he has a thing where he leaves his peanut butter with the jar open and it's and he'll just go by and like put a couple fingers in the peanut butter jar as he's just you know walking around the house thinking or whatever and it's like that's his thing so yeah so he's another big peanut butter fan oh yeah glory sauce fan excuse me glory sauce fan glory sauce (laughs) Well, Addison, that's it. That is our Fast Five, and that is the show. Thank you so much for coming in today, Thanks so man. Much for having me. This is awesome. If folks want to keep up with you and everything that you got going on, what's the best way for them to find you? Um, probably on Instagram, I would think. Uh, Garden City Artist. At Garden City Artist. I will put that link in the show notes as well. Uh, again, thank you for being here. Thank you for coming and telling your story. And uh, it was our first time meeting in person, and I, and I just love you, and I love what you're doing here, and I wish you nothing but the best of everything that you've got coming in the future, sir. Thank you so much. I love you. I oh. love you so much more. I love this podcast. I love your, I love all your interviews that you do. and it, it, It's just what you're doing positively impacts everybody, and it always makes my day better. And there's a lot of them that has you know impacted me a lot more than others, but always in a positive way. And it really makes a difference, and it makes a difference to everybody that listens. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Uh, thank you. Thank you. If you would like to find out more about Addison, again, you can check out the show notes. Also, the links will be on the guest page at chewingthefatbr.com. While you are there, if you would like to financially support this podcast, I'd appreciate it if you buy me a coffee. Again, that's chewingthefatbr.com. We've also got a store on there with some T-shirts and some uh, journals and stuff like that. If that will help you out. I'd appreciate you take a look there as well. But as always, I look forward to the next time we have to sit a spell and chew the fat. <laughs>